before we get into the procedure, here are the safety considerations, specifically due to the following chemical hazards present in the COD digestion solution. These include concentrated sulfuric acid, potassium dichromate and hexavalent chromium, mercury, and silver sulfate. Because of the hazards, it is very important to use proper personal protective equipment, or PPE, such as safety glasses and gloves when performing this test. Here are the method references for the COD procedure. The first is method 5220D from the standard methods for the examination of water and wastewater. And then more specifically, the US EPA approved method from Hawk, a company based in Loveland, Colorado in the USA. To understand what is actually happening during the COD test, I have included a description from John Stone's The Chemistry of Chemical Oxygen Demand. Basically, organic carbon in the sample is oxidized by the potassium dichromate in the digestion solution. This reduces the hexavalent chromium, or chrome plus six, to trivalent chromium, or chrome plus three. We then measure colorimetrically, or by the color changes in the visible spectrum. Because we are using test kits from Hawk, here is their brief method description. Again, emphasizing that COD is basically milligrams of oxygen consumed per liter of sample in the presence of strong acid, heat, and potassium dichromate. The measurement is dependent on which kit is used. For high range HR, up to 1500 milligram per liter COD, we measure trivalent, or chromium plus three, or the chromic ion produced, which is green in color. For low range LR, up to about 150 milligram per liter COD, we are measuring how much hexavalent chromium or chrome 6 remains, which is yellow in color. For those interested in the chemical equation, I found this from a Hawk UK slideshow. They explain the results a little differently, looking at the amount of oxidant, the potassium dichromate, that is consumed as the organic matter is broken down during the digestion process. More oxidant consumed equates to higher levels of organics in the sample. Supplies needed for the chemical oxygen demand or COD procedure include a test kit from Hawk plus a tube rack. You can choose either the low range kit, which has a range from 3 to 150 milligram per liter COD, or the high range kit, which has a range of 20 to 1500 milligram per liter COD. The liquid in the tube contains concentrated sulfuric acid, mercury, silver sulfate, and potassium dichromate. You can see the starting color is a bit different between the two kits. Next, you will need a set of calibration standards, a micropipette, and some pipette tips. For this method, we will be using a larger 1 to 5 milliliter micropipetter and tips. Be sure to check out our video on preparing a set of calibration standards. In order to measure the results of our COD test, we will need a spectrophotometer. This lab instrument is used to measure absorbance or transmittance of light at a specified wavelength. This particular spectrophotometer uses a tungsten lamp to provide wavelengths in the visible spectrum. We will also use a special test tube holder as accessory for easy analysis using the Hawk test kit. Finally, we will need a block digester that can reach at least 150 degrees Celsius and a box of Kim wipes. KHP or potassium hydrogen phthalate is the chemical used to prepare calibration standards for COD analysis. KHP solid, which is a white crystalline material, is transferred into a labeled glass container. Since we use less than 10 grams to prepare a stock solution, this small glass container is perfect. The chemical is dried in an oven at 103 degrees Celsius overnight to remove any moisture. After drying, the container is moved to a desiccator to cool and ultimately for storage. To prepare the stock KHP solution, I'll weigh out 0.8500 grams of the dried chemical in a weighing boat and then transfer to a one liter volumetric flask. Approximately 500 mils of DI water is added along with a stir bar and the flask is put onto a stir plate to mix and dissolve the KHP. The first step in the COD procedure is to turn on the block digester to allow enough time for it to reach 150 degrees Celsius. This typically takes about 30 to 45 minutes.
the one to five mil pipetter has been fit with a pipette tip. Caps have also been removed from the Hawk test kit tubes so it is easier and faster. The first step is to pipette two milliliters of deionized water for the calibration blank solution into the first labeled tube. Tubes can be recapped immediately or you can wait until all standards and samples have been pipetted into individual tubes. Each calibration standard solution is transferred into a beaker so that it is easier to pipette. Two milliliters of each standard solution is then pipetted into a separate labeled Hawk tube. It is easiest to just label the tops of the caps. Continue pipetting two milliliters of each calibration standard solution into a labeled tube. For this video, the high and low range Hawk test kits were used with different calibration standard solutions. The tubes shown here with the lighter starting solution color are for the low range COD. Once all standards and samples have been added to the test tubes, the solution in the tubes must be mixed. To do this, the tubes are gently inverted three to five times or until the chemical precipitate that is present in each tube has been fully incorporated back into the solution. You can see here the precipitate in the bottom of the tubes. Continue to gently invert all tubes until fully mixed. As the solution mixes and the chemical reaction begins, the temperature of the solution in the tubes increases to the point that the tubes become hot to the touch. Now that all tubes have been mixed, it is time to load them into the block digester that is now at the desired temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. A timer is then set for two hours. While the test tubes are cooling, the spectrophotometer is turned on to warm up. The display on the instrument shows the various initialization steps. After the spectrophotometer initialization has completed, the desired wavelength is selected by pressing the up and or down nanometer buttons. Then the absorbance in this case, or transmittance, is zeroed. The tubes have cooled, so now we are able to measure the absorbances. The outside of each tube is wiped with a Kim wipe to remove any residue that could potentially affect the path of the tungsten lamp's light through the test tube. For high range COD measurements, we are measuring those at 620 nanometers, and for low range COD at 420 nanometers. The tube is put into the special test tube holder accessory within the spectrophotometer. This has a spring loaded piece that allows for varying sizes of test tubes to fit comfortably and securely within the holder. The absorbance or transmittance reading for each tube is recorded either on a log sheet or in a lab notebook. This log should include your name, date, sample ID, and measurement reading. Continue recording absorbance or transmittance readings for all standards and samples. After samples and standards have been analyzed, the solution in each of the test tubes must be disposed of. Because the solution contains a number of chemical hazards, we must collect the used solution. 
The easiest way to do this is to pour the solution into a beaker and then pour that into a specially marked carboy. At UW-Madison, we contact the Environmental Health and Safety Office to pick up this carboy for proper disposal. Once the hazardous solution has been properly disposed of from the tubes, the caps are thrown away and the test tubes are rinsed with tap water and then placed into a broken glass box. Finally, the absorbance or transmittance readings are entered into a spreadsheet using Microsoft Excel. The standard results are used to create a calibration curve and final sample concentrations can then be calculated. 